Thank you for attending today's session on DocuSign CLM. My name is Kelly Podersky, and I'm on the Solution Engineering team here at DocuSign. You hopefully already know that we're the leading e-signature company in the world, but with the launch of the DocuSign Agreement Cloud for Salesforce, what you might not know is that now we have a suite of purpose-built, powered by Lightning apps that integrate seamlessly with Salesforce. These products cover the entire agreement lifecycle, from document generation, to negotiation, to collecting signature, and centrally storing and searching. It all works without ever having to leave Salesforce. But today, we're specifically going to focus on DocuSign CLM for Salesforce. DocuSign CLM makes it painless for organizations to streamline the entire contract lifecycle, accelerating the pace of doing business, increasing compliance, and improving employee and customer experience. These are just a handful of some of the most common use cases for our joint solutions around areas such as sales, services, human resources, and they go even so much more beyond uh, just those specific areas. DocuSign CLM allows organizations to automate manual tasks, orchestrate complex workflows, and eliminate unnecessary risk. The end result are much more efficient employees, an accelerated pace of doing business, and increased compliance. All of this is delivered through an offering that's easy to implement, use, and extend across the entire organization, compared with other vendors, which are harder to deploy, and once running, harder to adapt for other use cases. CLM customers experience a much quicker path to value and easier expansion to more use cases. Now, without further ado, let's jump into a demonstration. Let's first get started right here in Lightning. We are currently on an opportunity and we are ready to move this into the next stage of getting that contract out for negotiation. So right from here, I'm going to go up to this button, name it whatever you'd like, and I'm going to generate a master agreement. Now, depending of course upon the scenario, this master agreement could certainly be a very generic master agreement, or perhaps it needs to be somewhat configured. You as the organization can decide if you want this to be very locked down or if you want the ability for, in this case, perhaps your sales rep to be able to make some of those changes. You'll see due to the seamless integration that a lot of the information is already going to populate right over into CLM for me. And you're going to see different types of triggers. For example, a note here that based on the opportunity value, it's going to let me know that some workflow will automatically be triggered. I'm pulling over information from the uh, primary client. And down here at the bottom, again, completely configurable, I can identify things such as, are we going to use standard contract terms, which will just pull in the basic information. Are we going to do some basic configurations of those terms? Or are we going to need to get even more uh, customizable here? So let's say, for example, I want to do some things such as changing the date. I'm going to change the date from 12-1 to, let's say, 12-21. I'm going to change the payment terms from 30 days to 60 days. And I love this example because let's say, uh, as a, a very easy way of looking at this, 30 days might be standard, but if we change it to 60 days, again, perhaps that might need to enforce a different workflow routing. If I need to add in some additional information here, I'll say this is my non-standard info. And I can identify if I want to add in different things like different appendices, if I need to change um, different key uh, legal criteria that's going to go in here. So by default in this scenario, we've got Delaware, but let's say that I want to change this to Pennsylvania or California. You'll see that immediately a whole different set of information is going to pop up based on, in this case, the state that I'm choosing. And same thing with things such as limitation of liability. Again, much of this might be very standard for you, but I can go in here and make different types of customizations, configurations, 
and all of that is going to be modified and changed in here. Now, once I go through and complete that, CLM is now using the document generation engine to show me a preview of what this document is going to look like. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I have any areas highlighted in blue that have been changed based on some of the choices that I just made a moment ago. For example, you'll see here that December 21st date, you're going to see here state of California based on what I entered and so on. If I need to go back and make any changes, I simply can hit the back button, make those modifications right away. But otherwise, if I'm happy with it, I can go ahead and click save. Once I go ahead and click save, what's going to happen at this point is the information on the back end is reading what the workflow should look like. The workflow, again, as I mentioned, could be taking me through a variety of different areas. So speaking of those workflows, what we just saw was the salesperson generating that MSA in Salesforce. Next, what we're going to look at is that it's going to go over to our legal team. So in this case, we want them to approve it and or make any necessary red lines or changes uh, before going on to the next process. And at that point, perhaps it could go over to the customer. And as we all know, this could certainly go back and forth and back and forth many times. Um, there's no need to identify how many times it's going to happen. Uh, it's just going to be until all parties are happy with the agreed upon MSA. And then at that point in time, finally, the e-signature component can automatically be triggered. So speaking of redlining, let's take a look at what that's going to look like here. First, I'm going to open this up within regular DocuSign Word. This is what I'm used to going through and doing all of my negotiations and red lines with. I don't expect anyone to have to learn how to use a new product or figure out anything along those lines to be able to just do some of those negotiations and red lines. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to enter in some of the details. Here are some changes I want to make. And I'm going to put in more changes here. And I'm going to delete some of this information. I'm going to save this off, get out of here. And what you're going to see is very quickly, this information will update right back into CLM for me. And the beauty of this is not only can I immediately see what those changes are, but you'll notice that when I was making those changes, I did not have track changes on. So how do we avoid that dreaded stare and compare? Well, we can automatically do the versioning for you, and you can compare back to any version that you want to, whether it be version 1 or version 100. So what you'll be able to see immediately right here are any of the areas that were changed, no matter how much I either entered in or removed, it's going to all be very, very obvious for me right here. Once I'm happy with those changes that I've made, I can then uh, choose from any of the predefined next steps, whether it's sending it out for a signature, another set of reviews, Whatever the case may be, I'm going to say good to go for signature just to fast forward through the demonstration. Hit complete. And at this point in time, your part of the process would be done. At this point, let's say that we've gone back and forth, back and forth, done all of the different red lines, accepted the changes, done the negotiations, and now we are ready to go ahead and sign that document. So just like a traditional DocuSign signature process, I will receive that document in my email per the workflow, go in there, and I can review all of the information that was updated and agreed upon. So remember, I, I made some of those changes there, I removed a few things, added a few things, but the next thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead, come in here, sign off on uh, my document, and finish. And if there's anyone else in the workflow that needs to then take care of their signatures, they'll be able to do the same. Once all the contracts, documents, and signatures have been executed, of course, because of the tight integration within Salesforce, we now can return back to the opportunity, 
see that the stage in this case has been updated to closed one. The stages here have been updated. The closed date's been updated, and all of the information will automatically be triggered right back into Salesforce. And last but certainly not least, let's take a look at some of the magic that goes on behind the scenes. We just saw a moment ago how easy it is for, in this case, the sales rep to generate the MSA right from the Salesforce Opportunity screen. But behind the scenes, the administrator has huge value in being able to see high-level dashboards that are going to give you some of the quick reporting that you're going to need. It's going to give you insight to where all of your different uh, documents and processes are within their workflows. You'll have a full and secure document repository where you can track all of the documents and the versions of those documents. And then last but certainly not least, of course, one of my favorite areas as well is around the workflow itself. We talked a lot about the workflow and how just some, some easy changes when you're building out that document for the initial generation can really completely change the way that the workflow will look, i.e., if your payment terms are 30 days versus 60 days, if the dollar threshold is above or below $50,000, if it depends on the department, you name it. All of those different variables can certainly trigger different ways that the workflow can then happen, all the way down through and including until the signature. So that's just a quick introduction into the DocuSign CLM solution. And we are excited to get to show you more from here. So what are the next steps? We have a series of resources that are available to you that I'd like to point you to here, and we'd be happy to share this with you after today's session. With that being said, let's turn it over for questions.